My name is uh, Mike Ward. I'm the Global Director of Content at Informa Pharma Insights. And uh, we're here at the, uh, in San Francisco at the uh, Biotech Showcase uh, meeting, which runs alongside the JP Morgan uh, meeting where all the movers and shakers of the pharma and biotech industry uh, gather at every January. This afternoon, I'm actually, um, I've been joined by uh, Dr. Klaus Langner, who's the CSO of, of, of Grunenthal. Grunenthal is a, a, a German company that you actually, you know, against the sort of the, the run of play for a lot of uh, sort of you know, major pharmaceutical companies has actually seen some quite significant growth. In fact, you know, 2015 saw 8% growth. Actually, yes. So Klaus, you know, can you tell us what was behind that in the first place? First of all, I have to say that we are very happy about this growth. What's behind is we have major growth drivers in Europe and our major growth driver in Latin America. Right. In Europe, this is mainly our two compounds, Palexia, it was an own invention developed by Grunthal. Yeah. And the second one uh, is, Pale is uh, Versatis, it's our Lido uh, Cain patch. Right. In Latin America, uh, we are very aggressively growing due to the fact that one and a half years ago we made one of the biggest acquisitions in the history of Grunthal. We acquired Empresas Andromaco with a huge portfolio and alone with this acquisition we were able to double nearly our sales uh, in, in Latin America. Right, okay. So the, 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 um, <coughs> the two products that you, you, you mentioned where you saw growth, what, what was fueling that growth? Was that just because you were putting more marketing or was it, were they on a sort of a growth, growth trajectory anyway? Well, bluntly, to, uh, I have to say that I, I think it has something to do with the quality of the products. Right. We have a steep growth and we continuously invest our, our effort in marketing and sales. But nevertheless, these products are very, very well accepted by the market. Right. And, what, and so what, what indications are they there for? Well, Versatis, uh, especially uh, in neuropathic pain, yeah. and Versatis uh, and uh, Palexia has uh, the quite broad label, moderate to severe chronic, most receptive in neuropathic pain. Right, right. And uh, I think this was the strategy of Gruenthal in the past, focusing on pain and also going with, ex uh, with the, the, the example of, of uh, Palexia with a broad label. Now in the last one and a half and two years we have sharpened the strategy and we are focusing more and more now to smaller patient populations, to smaller indications, in pain but also outside of pain. Right. And, and are these for you know, sort of specialty areas, hospital populations or? You name it, it's exactly. Uh, let's say if you are focused and if you have this focused approach, uh, and we will do it uh, in, in Europe, uh, especially in this year. We will enter the hospital market with a new product, that's Salviso, which we have recently licensed in and we got uh, uh, the uh, registration at the end of last year in Europe and we will enter the market in the second quarter. You in license that from whom? We in license this from a US company, Acelrix. And uh, what is Salviso? Salviso is a combination of a drug and a device. Right. It's a sublingual tablet, Zufentanyl, and the device is something like a dispenser. Dispenser. Right. It's a pre-programmed, handheld, uh, non-invasive uh, device, and you let's say, can release a tablet with your personalized fingerprint. Right. And the, with this device, the patient is able to manage his post-operative acute pain. So, so it, patient management, so pain yeah, management by the patient. Real, real personal medicine then. You could call it like this. Patient centric. It's a very patient centric approach. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, can we just. You, you mentioned also about Latin America. Um, so, can we just have a little touch on that um, before we come back to your partnering strategies? In Latin America, you, you, you made this acquisition. Mm -hmm. um, now, clearly, when you, when you make an acquisition, you have uh, you know, uh, expectations that you're gonna, it's going to be positive um, uh, to, to the business. How, how did the Latin American um, acquisition actually pan out for you? Was, was it greater than your expectations or did you get what you expected to get? It perfectly matches what we've expected, but I can tell you our expectations were very high. Right. So, and what we achieved, I've just mentioned it before, um, we could double our revenues, yeah. let's say, and we have a nice portfolio, especially for the Chilean and for the Colombian market. And now we try to bring some of those products also in other areas in Latin America. Right, okay. And, and, and the strategy, so, so the strategy is to expand out of the, the sort of current Latin American market into, in, into other ones. Um, are you moving any of your traditional portfolio into, into Latin America? 
Yeah, we are doing this. Uh, we did this in the past and we will continue this also in the future. So, and by reshaping our R&D strategy, where I said we are coming from the broad label to more to the focused approach, we also take into account the Latin American market, especially Brazil and Mexico, which are very important markets for this subcontinent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Actually, so could you sort of you know, explain a little bit more of, of, of this sort of this the thinking behind this, sort of the changes to your R&D strategy? I mean, what 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 was the challenge that you thought the company was facing and? How's that been solved? Uh, there, there, there have been several challenges. In general, not only for Gruntal, for, for uh, nearly everybody working in the company. Now, Gruntal, with a long history in, in pain, we have developed, for example, New Sinter and Palexia yeah. uh, with a broad label. Now, developing for a broad label means roughly about nine phase three clinical trials with thousands of patients. But the outcome, what you will realize, this holds true for pain, but as for nearly every other indication is that there is only a quite low number of so-called responders. So you have to treat a lot of patients until you find responders. Now, we asked ourselves how can we improve this? Can we go to more personalized medicine? Can we go more to precision medicine? And we made an analysis, we, called, we made something what we call the pain landscape, where we have identified in the meanwhile nearly 100 pain indications, right. roughly about 20 to 30 are often, and now we are stepping in and we try to identify compounds, uh, let's say, which work. And we have one nice example, this is complex regional pain syndrome. It's an often indication where there is no treatment available at the moment. We are running a phase two slash phase three trial with a compound and hopefully in one year from now we know where we are. But it's not only pain, it's also outside of pain where we have identified niches which might be attractive for Gruntal. And how to start this? We were looking around and we have identified several patient organizations. So we were interacting with patient organizations and then we have found, uh, let's say, that uh, the indication Duchenne muscular dystrophy might be attractive for us. We made a search, we identified a company called Akashi here in the US and they have an interesting compound in clinical trial and we made a deal, it was announced last, uh, last week, uh, where we stepped in and now I think a company with a track record of Gruntal with this niche focused approach and Akashi with this really great compound, I think we can make the difference. So, so say for example, <clears throat> looking like an asset like that, if, if I was a biotech company and I sort of think, well, I'm in, I'm in the orphan disease space, um, what, what would I actually have to have in my, sort of, in, in my data package to attract your attention, for example? Well, I would say at least very good preclinical, late preclinical data or a good phase one data. So that's what we are looking for. I think what Grunthal makes an attractive partner is that we are a mid-sized company, privately owned. So uh, we are, at least that's the, the feedback uh, I've got, we are more agile than Big Pharma. We are much more focused on projects. We don't make uh, very fast portfolio decisions stepping in, then stepping out due to the fact that there is a merger between Grunthal or something like this. This will not happen. Much more sustainable strategy behind and more reliability for our partner. And do you have a sort of an expectation? I mean, we know that in some, some of the major pharmaceutical companies, just to fulfill their pipeline uh, or to backfill their pipeline as, as, as blockbusters go off, off, off patent, um, we see that something like 50% of, of, of their pipeline has now come from external sources. What, what, what's the shape at the moment as far as Grun and Tal's um, uh, concerned? And how do you anticipate that changing as we go forward? Well, I would say that this 50-50 approach is not too bad. Right. Gruntal is a quite aggressive uh, growth strategy and for sure we have own innovation on own compounds but this is not enough. We have to look for external innovation and we have different ways in identifying this. And uh, we established a group at Gruntal called the IMU Innovative Medicines Unit. Right. It's a group of four or five people and they are looking for external innovation in late preclinic, early clinic. And when we've identified something, and if it is not in pain, we form a network, a cluster. So take the backbone of Gruntal with all its R&D capabilities, and then identify partners who, to, who could help us to bring an asset from late clinic very fast to proof of concept. 
So, so this IMU, they at the moment they, they look at for pain, for pain and also for outside of pain. For pain, we had a nice example, although it is not directly pain, it is anesthesia. We signed a deal in the middle of last year where we got neosaxitoxin. That's a local anesthetic and it's a collaboration between the Boston Children's Hospital, a Chilean company called Proteus and Gruntal. And uh, with this compound, I think we can really make the difference because it's a long lasting local anesthetic. This is a nice example within pain. Outside of pain, we formed something what we called a fibrotic cluster. We're also interested in fibrolytic diseases and fibrotic diseases. And we made a deal with Nordic Bioscience and uh, with Charles River Laboratories to help us to uh, bring assets closer uh, to the patient. So, so if I was you know, in a university group or a biotech company and I had assets that I thought the Grunenthal you know, might, might like or might benefit, how would I how would I know where to, to, to look? I mean is there is there a site which shows what your wish list is or go to our homepage yeah. and contact us. Because uh, let's say we are in the moment we are open with respect to specialities. I've named Duchenne's muscular dystrophy, I've named fibrolytic diseases, that's quite a huge area. But uh, we are also in certain CNS areas to so just contact us and then we can sort out whether it might sense yes or not. Okay, and so, so final question. So 8% <coughs> growth mm -hmm. that you achieved last year, what's the, are, are you sort of anticipating to sort of keep at that pace going forward or, or are you even more ambitious and you don't want to be 15% a year so you can double in, in, in five years? Well, we have very ambitious goals, but it's hard to predict whether that be 8 or 10%, but we want to grow significantly. This year, just as an, a nice example, we made 700 million revenues in Europe. Next year, we try to come close to the 800 million. So you see the ambition behind. Okay. And this is not an easy uh, uh, environment we are in. in no, no, sure, sure. But we are highly committed and I think that our products we have in the pipeline, let's say, um, will help us. Okay, okay. Well, Klaus, thank you very much for, for, for stopping by and, and sharing those thoughts with us. Thank you for the interview. All right, cheers.